Ladies and gentlemen, you're in the LZ again. Welcome back. Today, I want to have a conversation about Sean Murray being candid about the past, present, and future of No Man's Sky in an industry article that was published today by Games Industry Biz. And by the end of the video, talk about the next information for No Man's Sky Beyond that we can expect to see. We have a date, everybody. But a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. First, if you didn't know it already, No Man's Sky is on sale 50% off on Steam for the Steam Summer Sale. That sale actually goes until July 9th. If you are sitting on the fence about No Man's Sky, you know, three years later, or you already own the console version, you've been considering getting the PC version, now would be the time to do it. You have a couple of weeks to do it. Time to bite down on this and grab it. It's excellent. It's great with mods. Uh, the footage that you're looking at right now, actually, is from the No Man's Sky Fantasy mod by Redmus. I recommend it, I, checking it out. I can put that in the description below. Also, a link to the Steam store page for No Man's Sky, 50% off, especially if you have VR, right? If you were waiting for the killer app for VR, this is the time to do it. Speaking of July 9th, that's probably going to be the next time that we officially see Sean Murray in an official capacity because he's going to be opening up the Develop Conference in Brighton with its first keynote, specifically talking about No Man's Sky. We'll get to that in a moment, but about the this article and please do check the description below for a link to this article it is certainly worth a read but an article by James Batchelor from the UK editor of Games Industry Biz titled Sean Murray on No Man's Sky I thought we were making a niche game I'm not really going to cover the whole article but I am going to highlight up a couple a couple of interesting bullet points that I found from the article that I really want to highlight for you here first things first Sean talks about the players and more appropriately the exponential growth of the the No Man's Sky community with every single update. He says, No Man's Sky is a funny game. I always underestimated how big it's going to be, thinking right now we're entering a quiet period, which we're in now, where the pressure eases off a bit and there are fewer people playing. What do you mean pressure is easing off, Sean? Do you mean the, the pressure I'm feeling right now? He also says, if we're doing an update, I've, I'll think, well, the last one did X, so this one will do half of that. I have been consistently wrong. Each update we've done has been significantly bigger than the one before it. Next, particularly so, we saw the kind of numbers that a AAA game would be happy with at launch. That's actually pretty good, actually. We do know that No Man's Sky sold at least 4 million units on, P on PS4 by itself, which is a hard number to come by because Sony doesn't really release that information. It was very successful for us, and the player base has stayed strong. So the, it's good to have some consistency, you know, after an update, because generally the player base kind of falls off a bit. And Hello Games isn't stopping there. More multiplayer options and even virtual reality support is being added with this year's Beyond update. Murray admits that the team is a bit bad and a bit broken because we can't help ourselves. Murray had speculated that Beyond might finally indicate diminishing interest in No Man's Sky, but he says the level of excitement among the community seems to be higher than what it was for Next. Honestly, as much as I like Next, I'm pretty, I, I, I'm sort of sitting on the fence about Beyond right now because for one, we have no idea what No Man's Sky Online is going to be. I don't have a whole lot of interest in VR. I'm not, a, I'm not typically a a VR player, although I do like some of the goodies that they added to the game to sort of facilitate VR. And then we don't, we still don't know what the third part of the update is. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to, to gauge excitement for Beyond when we don't know what it is. And he also says, who knows, maybe I'll be proved wrong again, he says, but I'm still waiting for that quiet period. Next thing, he actually talks about the game being polarizing, and this kind of caught me off guard. Uh, I didn't expect him to answer it this way, but he says, we knew that no Man's Sky was going to be polarizing. We knew that wasn't going to be an experience for everyone. When we released No Man's Sky, and in fact, when we first started talking about it, I thought we were making a pretty niche game. And I continued to think for, I continued to think that for a long time. A lot of the design decisions we made were for a niche game, and it turned out to be a really large niche. Which is fair. I mean, I would I would imagine that if it didn't get the sort of AAA exposure that it did, that it might have sort of stayed a little lower key 
But who are we kidding, right? I mean, when the game was first announced, and, and, and as a YouTuber, as a No Man's Sky YouTuber, almost specifically, it was, it, it's, it's, it, it was, it, it sort of facilitated the growth and the success of this channel simply by how many people were searching for this game on YouTube. So I think Sean really just underestimated the power of what he had here. My very first video net netted about 46,000 views on No Man's Sky by itself. It was the very first video I ever made, and each video that I make now, even now, three years later, gets about 1,000 to 2,000 views in the very first day of its being of it being uploaded. So that's crazy the amount of uh, interest that this game has driven and still has driven, right? It's still driving uh, growth for this channel, oddly. Next thing I want to highlight is John Murray talks about day one sales, and I kind of agree with him here. He says that Murray notes that more games uh, awards are adding categories like most evolved game or best ongoing game for which No Man's Sky has received multiple nominations for. Also in the running have been games like Rainbow Six Siege, Fortnite, Sea of Thieves, Warframe, all of, the, all of these games that have maybe a lukewarm launch or were announced dead on arrival. And honestly, he has a point, right? If you look at if you look at games like particularly Siege, I'm, pr I'm pretty familiar with that game. It had a pretty rough launch and now I would probably say that uh, Rainbow Six Siege is probably the best multiplayer shooter of this generation. It took it a little bit to get there, but the game is absolutely addictive to play. It's super good. Final Fantasy 14, the same thing, right? Had a tough launch. They had to literally spend god awful amounts of money to reboot the game almost from scratch and now it's a super popular MMO that people enjoy. Uh, so I mean these things can happen. He goes on to say that I think there's way too much emphasis from all of us as an industry on day one sales and the heat of the community reaction and far less on what the long term impact of these games are and what the plans for them are. Murray says we want as an industry to do crazy silly ambitious things. Sure we're critical of things that come out and we're not happy when it's fair to not be happy when things aren't what we want them to be but we also need to have patience with ambitious things to support them that's because that's what we want from the industry I only half agree with his statement here the first part when him saying that the, the, the too much emphasis on day one sales and the community reaction I have sort of adapted to the idea that no game is going to ever launch perfect in this day and age where HD development and patching is available and monetization has gone crazy. It's few and far between that we're going to see perfect launches. It almost never happens anymore, right? Especially the larger AAA games that aren't necessarily chasing quality so much as they're just changing. They're just chasing your dollar bill, right? And I also agree with him about the crazy, silly, ambitious things, right? I think that we, some of us are a bit hypocritical in the idea that we want, we, we, we are crazily crying for these developers to do risky and insane and ambitious things and stop churning out the same old tired crap. But when we do that, we don't give them the time of day, right? We don't allow those ideas to really take hold. We, we're very resistant to change, yet we want change so badly. If you factor out the launch conversation about No Man's Sky, No Man's Sky was actually the perfect example of this, right? When it launched. It's why I was so crazily excited for it before it launched was because I was interested in what they had to offer. It was crazy. I'm no stranger to these games that are deeply rooted in, in sort of concepts of emergent gameplay, right? Minecraft is great. Starbound is great. These are games that I played well before No Man's Sky launched. But to do it at the scale that they presented when they first revealed No Man's Sky, that's why No Man's Sky was so popular because it created questions. It created intrigue. People wanted to know what it is. And looking back, Sean Murray refusing to give a straight answer on what No Man's Sky is essentially is both why people were super interested and pissed off at him at the same time. 
But the part that I disagree with the most with him is that he, you can't just say that we need to have patience with you all the time when you launch a game in a broken state, right? If you launch a game or you launch an update in a broken state and the game is more broken than it is functional, next, the next update is definitely a prime example of this, right? When that, when that update launched, literally every single one of the new features that was pitched as the, the main offerings for next were broken for me and I had to wait a couple of weeks for them to be completely ironed out. I'm a very patient person but you can lose a lot of steam, right, for believability and trustability and reliability when you launch an update or a game that is half playable. And lastly, the big one, the big news today. Sort of kind of wrapped deeply into the article down towards the bottom, there's a small quote that says, Sean Murray will be sharing more about Hello Games and and No Man's Sky as the opening keynote of the Develop Brighton 2019. He will be discussing the story behind its original development and the transformative updates as well as hinting at the future of both the game and the studio. I mean, what else could he be talking about other than Beyond? Now, of course, I wouldn't get too hyped about the information that could or couldn't be developed, couldn't, that, that may not be delivered there, right? Remember that we know right now that Hello Games are developing it at least two other games aside from No Man's Sky right now, right? You've got The Last Campfire. There's at least two dev team members on Hello Games working on that. We haven't heard a whole lot about that one since the, since it was unveiled, right? And since GDC, Sean Murray announced that they're actually working on another project that he's pretty excited about right now. Also in the article, Sean Murray goes on to say that they're happy with No Man's Sky and they can't wait to do more. We just have to be there to support it if they plan to to do so. So if the updates keep growing the game and the fan base, I mean, why would they why would they do anything different? So of course there's a huge piece of me that really says, "Hey, this is it. It's time. It's summer. The very least that you could do is tell us what the third component of Beyond is. Even if it's super inevitable that we're waiting till August sometime. Damn you, L plays. You jinxed us all. It's time to get a bigger idea of what Beyond is. And I know a lot of us are getting antsy and we're getting in patient and I understand you're all going to be happy when they show you what it is. I promise a lot of you on my Twitter and in my comment section on YouTube videos are just sort of over it, right? And I get it. So there it is, folks. Do again, check the description for the link to this article. It's a very good read. A lot of good candid information about things like Hello Games' relationship with Sony and how that was difficult to manage at times. But comment down below. Tell me, do you think not, do you think Sean Murray is going to show us something super substantial other than the awesome history and future of Hello Games? And if this was helpful to your No Man's Sky viewing experience, do like, subscribe, click the bell for way more No Man's Sky content, both before and beyond beyond. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. I'll see you later.